perhaps the most popular annual in my area here on the line between 7B and 8A is Lantana. It's, it's prized for its drought tolerance, it's prized for its profuse blooming pattern from mid-summer all the way through fall. Just a great, great annual for us here. Lantana is extremely drought tolerant. It's one of those annuals you can put in the ground, plant it, you water it a few times once it's rooted in. As long as you're not having a bad drought in your area, this plant will thrive for you. It's not one that you have to water every single day like say something like a petunia or something that needs a little more water. Lantana will start off slow for me in my area. We'll plant this in April or May and it'll peter along and then come somewhere between mid-June and July it really takes off and then in the fall this time of year in September it just is awesome and it'll bloom for us all the way until first frost which for me our average first frost is November 11th usually between Halloween and Thanksgiving we have a frost and with the average date being November the 11th and so this flower here just produces and produces and produces for us. One thing that I want to address one of my most popular videos here on the channel is three ways to propagate lantana. I'll leave that up here and one of the comments that I get a lot of is why would you want to propagate lantana? It's invasive. In certain areas of the world, this is highly invasive. Lantana is native to Central America, a very tropical region of the world. And in tropical regions and in certain subtropical regions, this is an invasive plant. So even areas in the United States like Florida and South Alabama, South Georgia, Louisiana, uh, certain parts of Texas, this will be on that invasive plant list. But where I am here, I'm far enough north that it's not invasive. If you're in zone eight, you're in zone seven, you're in zone six, five, four, you don't have to worry about this being invasive. If you're, if you're further south, I would never condone on this channel propagating plants or planting plants that are invasive in your area. So I just wanted to make that clear. One of the reasons this is so invasive is that it produces a berry and the birds come and eat the berries and then they'll fly off and they'll do their business out of a tree or on a fence somewhere and that seed drops on the ground and that that seed will germinate into a plant and these leaves are toxic to mammals okay so if you were to eat a bunch of this it'd probably make you sick so horses and and cows they know not to eat this stuff, right? So it's kind of a double-edged sword in the fact that the birds eat these berries and then they drop the, the seeds elsewhere. And then once these flowers start coming up, animals don't eat them. They'll eat the native plants instead. And so lantana, where it is invasive, can just kind of take over. So we've talked about all the negative things about lantana in, in certain areas of the world it being invasive. Where it's not invasive, this is a great plant. Let's talk about a lot of those benefits right now. Lantana's growth habit. This one here is more of a mounding habit. We can have mounding habits. We can have trailing habits. We can have spreading habits. They've been bred for a, a bunch of different habits. So some lantana, they'll actually turn colors as they mature. So this particular one, the juvenile flowers will be solid red. And then as they mature, they'll, the outer edges will turn to more of an orange color. And then the, after that, we'll get more of a yellow color. Just a nice variation of interest with color. And we see that with a lot of different lantana. They've been bred to actually change their flower color as they mature throughout the bloom cycle. So here's another example of how the flower colors can change as the plant matures. So this one goes from pink to yellow. What we would consider a flower, I would, I would call that a flower, but technically that is several dozen flowers. Each one of those individual, we'll call them funnels, is a flower. So we refer to this as an umbel and each one of those flowers will get a fruit. Here's one that's maturing right here. You can see what I'm talking about. See, there's probably already half a dozen little fruits there. Those will go from green to navy blue. And once they're navy blue, the birds will pick them off and eat them. And like I said earlier, here in my area, 
These are not going to be invasive, so we're not really worried about the birds eating them off. So let's talk about pruning lantana. You can give them a slight shear any time of the year. And when you do that, I'm right here on the edge between the grass and the flower bed. And so the lantana have grown out past the Bermuda several times this year. And, and I'll just, I'll give these a, a really rough cut. As a matter of fact, I'll just turn the weed eater up on edge and, and just buzz it as I'm edging out the flower bed here. And you will get profuse bloom. So it'll, it'll branch out wherever you cut it. So if where you made one cut, there'll be five or six branches come out and at the terminal ends of those new branches, you'll get flowers. So if you want more densely packed flowers on your lantana, just prune them back at any time that you want to, and you're gonna get a profuse bloom of flowers within 10 to 14 days. Here is another example where I've had to prune back the lantana this walkway. At one point, the lantana had come all the way in where we were literally wading through the lantana to get to the patio. And I came in here with head shears and cut them back. And within two weeks of, of doing that, this was just covered with blooms. It looked really, really great. At the end of the growing season, as we enter frost, you have that first frost and these die back. You can prune these all the way back to the ground and those cultivars that are hardy will come back. If it's an annual cultivar where you live, they're not gonna come back. You can just pull them up out of the ground. But there's several cultivars that are going to be hardy. And let's talk about those. A couple of lantana that are perennials in my area. Uh, there's one called Miss Huff that is a very hardy uh, perennial lantana for us. We had a flash freeze here uh, over Christmas last year. We went from 53 degrees to eight degrees in about two to three hours. It was just really, really fast. I thought I was gonna lose a lot of plants and I did, but lantana was not one of those, at least not uh, the ones that are hardy here. They did do good. So Miss Huff's a good one. Chapel Hill's a good one. Another perennial one would also be Sunset. That's a nice perennial lantana for, here, for us here in this area. Outside of those, they get marginal in terms of are they annual or are they perennial. It depends on how cold the winter gets. If we have a mild winter here right on the line between 7B and 8A, some of those that are listed as annual are going to be perennial. On the other hand, some of those marginal ones that are listed as perennial, if we go down to like five degrees, we may lose some of those as well. So, but those are a handful that are just steadfast perennials. Like I said, they survived here in my area without any damage at all when we had the flash freeze last year. So I often hear people say, lantana is so fragrant, it smells great. The flowers themselves are not fragrant. There may be a little bit of fragrance associated with them. Where I get the fragrance from is especially after I prune it. If you break off the foliage or stem and crush it and you smell it, to me it smells citrusy. It smells like citrus and I do like that smell. It smells really good um, but it's not the flowers. Don't think that uh, when you grow lantana that you're going to have this wonderful fragrance flowing through the air from the flowers. That's not the way it works. However, you will get some fragrance off of the foliage, but you have to kind of rub your hands on it or, or crush a leaf and you can really, it's really pungent. Not in a bad way. It smells very good in my opinion. Like I said, it smells like citrus, like maybe a lime. And I really like the smell, but that's where the smell comes from. If you watch us here on the channel, you know that my backyard, a huge chunk of it, is a perennial slash pollinator garden. Uh, I don't use any herbicides or any insecticides in the pollinator area at all. Uh, so we're, we're just putting some fertilizer down and if we have any cultural controls we need to take care of, we're either going to just pull weeds, we're not going to spray weeds, and we never spray any insecticides in this area because we want to attract the pollinators to this area. That being said, lantana is a great attractor for those pollinators. So you're gonna get a myriad of species of butterflies. You're gonna get bumblebees. You're gonna get honeybees. You name it, they are coming to lantana and they're coming to it in droves. So we get monarchs, we get swallowtails, we get painted ladies, and we get a whole class of skippers that come through here as well. And just 
all over the place all the time. Hundreds of butterflies in the backyard at one time during peak butterfly season, which for us was kind of a couple of weeks ago. Some good companion plants for lantana. So lantanas typically are gonna be reds and oranges and yellows. There's some pinks and there's some whites and there's some lavenders, but most cultivars are gonna be some combination of orange, yellow, red. So what plays well off of that? Purples play really well off of those color combinations. So salvia would be a great one. So salvia is drought tolerant, can take full sun, just like lantana. Verbena is another good one, full sun. Doesn't grow quite as tall as salvia. So if you wanted like a, an understory plant in front of your lantana, that would be a good, good one to go with. Another one is Russian sage. So Russian sage is not quite as dark a purple. It is a lighter color purple than verbena and salvia. And it can also get a little taller than lantana. So if you wanted some bluish or purplish colors in the background of your lantana, so a, a nice color combination might be to have verbena or salvia in the front, your lantana in the middle, and then your Russian sage in the back. A couple of other plants that can go well with your lantana. Echinacea, which is one of our natives. It does really well here for us. We stick it in the ground and we forget about it. And another one that you could use is zinnia. So zinnia is gonna be an annual and there's a myriad of different colors of zinnias. There's lots of pinks and reds uh, that you can use there as well. So those are some nice companion plants that you can use with your lantana. In the comments below, give me your thoughts on lantana. Is it invasive in your area? If so, just leave the town or the state that you live in and we can just kind of diagram where those areas are at. If you have a favorite cultivar of lantana, leave that in the comments as well. I'd love to hear from you. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor. And until next time, happy gardening.